So this is an electron gun, and this one specifically is a diffraction tube. <laughs> This is going to be a really simple demonstration of an electron gun, which is going to give you one of the key ideas, the key principles in particle acceleration, because an electron gun is the simplest form of a LINAC, linear accelerator. But it's also going to give you the idea of fermionic emission, which is when an electron is released from a metal because the metal is hot. What it consists of is a metal at the back, which is like a filament, like a lamp filament, uh, you know, ordinary light bulb filament. And that is attached to the negative side of a EHT, and the EHT is behind it. But I just put this in here so you can clearly see what's going on here. So that plate is going to be very hot and very negative. So that's where we're going to get fermionic emission. Now fermionic emission means that the filament is hot, therefore it gives out electrons. So thermionic means thermal, okay, or caused by heat, and emission means to give out. It's like the electron is boiled off the metal. Then I've got this part here, this is the anode. Now electrons being negative, anodes being positive, the electrons are gonna be attracted to that. That therefore is causing an acceleration. We're accelerating these particles through about 5,000 volts. So each individual electron is gonna have 5,000 electron volts of energy when it gets to this point here. So the beam of electrons is coming from our fermionic emission there, accelerated here and through to our screen. Can't see it, it's not fluorescing anything in the vacuum of the chamber, but it is fluorescing on this screen here. But hang on, how do we know this isn't just light? Well, light is not deflected by a magnet. So if I bring a magnet close to the beam, you can see that I'm deflecting that. So energy is a really useful workaround. We've got our filament, which is hot, and it's doing thermionic emission. And it's being accelerated towards an anode, which is at plus five kilovolts. Well, what's the speed of this electron? Well, we know our definition of voltage is how much energy does each coulomb of charge have? V equals EQ. So I can actually use this to work out the amount of energy the electron has there. It's negative, it's been attracted to that, it's gaining kinetic energy. And actually, because we know Q is E, we can really, really simply do this sum because we can say it is 5,000 electron volts, as E, in this case, is VE, or EV. This is a really, really useful non-SI unit for particle physics, because very, very quick, we know how much energy we are talking about. Each individual electron has this much energy. If we want to work with that to work out the speed though, we need to convert that into SI. And whenever you're converting non-SI into SI, follow the unit like it's a formula. So our energy in joules is going to be 5,000 times by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, which is the charge on an electron. And you could say times a volt, but we don't need to times it by one. That is... So we're saying that's been given to the electron as kinetic energy, and you know what, well, EK is just half mv squared. So this, 8 times 10 to the minus 16, is half mv squared. And we know the mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Again, we must use SI units for mass of electron there. So times it by two, divide it by the mass, and square root it, gives me... four, one, nine, zero, 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 zero or 4.2 times 10 to the seven, meters per second.
So that's the speed of the electron after it's got to this point. Interesting side note, what's that as a fraction of the speed of light? It's about 14%. We're not really expecting to encounter relativistic effects until about 0.7 of the speed of light. So we're until about 70% of the speed of light. So we're okay to be using uh, normal rest mass at this kind of point.